Hey guys, it's Matt. The theme of this video is local reality breakdowns. Things that don't happen on the screen. The screen is a mess. It's a fluid mess that's continuously being corrupted by creeps. I'm talking about things that happen right in your heart-based reality bubble or right around your immediate vicinity. Hopefully the comments of this video will be more important than this presentation. Hold back for just a few minutes. Let me give you uh, at least one of mine so you know what I'm talking about. To me, the outer screen, the outer ring of reality is a reality breakdown fluid mess. I mean, it things change, Mandela effects, whatever it may be. Remember our concentric rings reality diagram. The screen reality or what's out there is not the same in my opinion, as your local heart-based reality. It seems the same to anybody that doesn't investigate what we do. Oh, it must be the same. It wants you to believe it's the same. Remember in the diagram, the hands reaching in. It's always trying to get in to your heart-based local reality. Well, there's some things that are changing in my local reality. Very strange things. I'll mention the first one now so you can get an idea of what this video is about. But maybe the more important part is the screen reality is different in my opinion, and how does it mesh, or how does the screen or the outer ring uh, impinge or break in to your local reality? That's a bigger uh, issue to discuss. And the most important part, uh, most important thing that may come out of this is how to, tr to not let it in, how to keep at least your local reality bubble as intact as possible. What are the people around us doing? They're letting it in. In the movie Poltergeist, little Carol Ann and Robbie in their room, they didn't do anything. The closet just be kind of became possessed. It wasn't Carol Ann's fault. The demon creatures were trying to come to the through the closet, break into Carol Ann's reality, then that impinged or infringed upon the reality of the house, and then that spread out to change the entire California tract home neighborhood. But in this world, what do the people around us do? What do our friends and family do if they're Carol Ann in this example? It's not like something just broke into the closet and, uh-oh, what's that? They're trying to get something to break into their closet. They constantly interact with it. It's like uh, the mother in Poltergeist going up and Carol Ann is painting or spray painting pentagrams in the closet to draw it in. The people are here around us are always trying to draw the outer ring or screen into their personal reality bubbles. It goes along with falling for the trick, but that's not all of it. One last note before giving you my first example. This channel, Matt, I'm always talking about the creeps and the meddling of the outer ring or screen. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about here. Many of the changes I observe in what I call local reality or heart-based reality bubble, it doesn't seem to be from the creeps at all. It's like natural changes to reality. There are changes that come here all the time, in my opinion, that are not the result of creeps meddling here or doing whatever over here. I think that's the way the reality is built. Things change all the time. People sync up to those changes. People on the ship, like it's like a download they uh, get right in line with the changes where those changes now have always been here. They're retrocausal or retroactive in nature, just the way the reality is built. I don't think that's from creeps meddling. I think that's the natural design. When you're ready to exit this reality or not do it anymore or leave the you know physical planes behind, uh, you, you, you vibrate or, or you, you resonate at such a different frequency that it all starts to look strange, in my opinion, even natural changes. Okay, enough said. Here's the first example. It's a change to reality itself, in my opinion. I've talked about it before, but let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. When I drive out down my road to get to a larger road, Route 100, Route 30, or to a highway, 202, etc., um, three, four birds will fly low a few feet off the ground right in front of my car. Not to where I almost hit them, but yeah, close to where I almost hit them. Yes, it happens much more on my local road than on the other roads around here, but I'm telling you, that did not occur when I was in my 30s, in my 40s, late 40s. It happened three, four years ago, and now it's, it's every time I drive the road. Bird, zoom low, right in front of the car. Bird, zoom low, right in front of the car. 
And it's very easy to be a skeptic in this regard. Of course, I can hear people trying to yell at me or anybody that stumbled upon this video or not old guard saying, Matt, have you ever heard of Occam's razor? Occam's razor. Why don't you have a seat here, Matt, before I book you into the asylum? Book us into the room. What's more likely, Matt, that you just didn't notice the birds flying back and forth? You say your roads have a lot of bushes. Your road's 22 miles to Davenport, a lot of trees and bushes, and the birds were always flying back and forth between their little nests, the main nest and the vacation nest, or you didn't notice it, or all of reality's changed. What's more likely, Matt? Let me just put it to you that way before I book you into the room. Say what you want. When it started happening, again, I don't know, three or four years ago, I found it very strange. And when it happened three times in a row, four times in a row, I noticed it immediately. One or two birds, I almost hit these birds. Then the next time I drove out, birds fly low right in front of the front of the car. What is this all about? I noticed it. There's no doubt in my mind that was not happening um, in my 30s, in my 40s, or the first 16, 17 years I lived in this house. Same road, same set of circumstances. Yes, I believe it is a change to reality itself. Now, here's the thing. Here's what many people that are very interested in the Mandela effect don't understand. They seem to comment in the same way, and they lack this understanding, even if they say they're Mandela affected. This is related to the Mandela effect. Okay, if I go to my neighbor, for example, down the way here, and I say, um, you know these birds that when we drive out, they fly low in, in, in front of, sorry, across the front of the car? He would say, yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. Now, if I say, do you remember that happening before four or five years ago? He's going to say, I always remember that. That's the way these reality changes work or the way the Mandela effect works. He'll say, yeah, but ever since I've lived up here, these birds just zoom back and forth in front of my car as, as long as I can remember. The people that are on the frequency of the ship of fools that are completely vibrating with it, they are like absorbed into its changes, even to them in a retrocausal fashion. When I asked my same neighbor I'm thinking of now, are these streaks, uh, like we, well, we, I didn't tell them what we call them. We, you and I call them tails of chemicals, ducktails. <laughs> Wasn't that like a cartoon? <laughs> ducktails of chemicals. I said, does that, is that always happen? I don't remember that when I was at the pool or beach as a kid. And he said, oh, well, yeah, that's certain parts of the day, those streaks. Oh, that's always happened. I remember that clearly when I was a kid lying on the ground looking up from the pool. Now, he's not lying. These changes to reality, like the Mandela effect, are retro-causal in nature. If he says he remembers these streaks, what we call tails of chemicals in the sky, then as a kid in the late 70s, because he's a little older than me, I believe him. I believe they were. People have showed me old pictures, black and white from the 60s, with the long streaks. Changes are retro-causal. People in our community that are Mandela affected, that are interested in the same topics that we're interested in, they still don't understand this dynamic. They're still looking for a date of change. It doesn't work like that. We may notice the change. 99% of the time in all these examples, there's no date of change. You're either absorbed into the frequency of reality, which means you're on the ship of fools, or you're rooted somewhere else, so you notice the change. It's very simple. I don't know why so many people are confused by this. Here's another strange thing that's happened in my, quote, local reality or heart-based reality bubble or comes in that I've wanted to talk to you guys about for a while. This could be similar to what I'm talking about here, or it could be very different. And I'm not saying this is one or the other because I don't know. It's just strange to me either way. And if it's not a reality shift, it certainly may not be. I'll explain to you why I think it's strange either way. Um, the R5 line is the uh, rail, rail line that starts at Thorndale and goes down uh, through Villanova, Bryn Mawr, Paoli. It, is, uh, it runs next to Route 30. I don't know. Is it like two miles from here? Something like that? Now, the Amtrak also runs uh, parallel as well into Philadelphia. And I think these whistles I hear, I believe, are mostly Amtrak. But it can start at 6.30 in the morning. Sometimes it seems even earlier. And you hear the train... Wh <laughs> you hear the train whistle clearly. And I started hearing this, I don't know, two or three years ago. And the first thing I thought is, I've been up here living in this house, uh, I don't know if it's 21 or 22 years. Um, I've n No way. I've, I've never heard 
the whistle before. Now, yeah, I hear you. There could be a very simple explanation. Well, Matt, maybe there was an accident on the tracks or somebody was harmed. And now they, at every major interchange, the Amtrak by law has to blow the whistle. Okay, yeah, I hear you. I'm not saying not saying every time a train beeps a, a horn, it's a reality breakdown. I, I, I got you. It's just very strange. I start a couple of years ago, start thinking, well, for that whistle has not been heard here for 17 or 18 years. Sure, maybe they changed their procedures, something else. But I've ne- I haven't investigated. It could go either way. I could ask my neighbor, and my neighbor could say, well, that, I've, heard, I've heard that whistle in the morning for the 20 years. You know, I moved in kind of when you moved in. For 20 years, we've been here. What do you, you just started hearing it? It could go the way of the birds flying low. But without further investigation, I'm not going to pick reality breakdown as my number one option as to what I think is happening. Um, again, but it's still very strange because you have to understand the, the suburbia that runs along this train line, especially when we get down to Bryn Mawr, Ardmore, Berwyn. I mean, we're talking about uh, average home prices of, um, you know, I don't know, a million, a million and a half. I mean, on either side of the train line, we're talking about top lawyers and CEOs and judges and how are they putting up with, I mean, it's loud, okay? If you, nobody down there, thousands, and these homes are very close together, you know, very nice homes, but on a, an eighth of an acre, maybe a few have a quarter acre, but some are really wedged together, even though they're going at a million to a million and a half each. Bryn Mawr, Gladwin, much more expensive. They're putting up with being woken up Thousands of people that have influence are putting up with this train whistle. Nobody sleeps in past 6.15. I, I don't understand. I, see, that that's where it's... I'm not saying it's a reality breakdown. And if, if Amtrak put a procedure forth, well, we're going to be safe and blow this whistle at 6.30 in the morning. Well, somebody would have shut that down. Somebody with clout would have made a phone call and said, I'm not putting up with this. How it, it keeps continuing, it's, it's not... It won't wake me up here. It's miles away. But there's 5,000 homes of affluent people that live like a block away from the whistle. It's not, it wouldn't be the same as the whistle in My Cousin Vinny, but it would be like a quarter that. So how is it continuing? I mean, you understand, is that, I'm not sure if that's making sense. For any troll that's going to grab the sound bite, no, I don't think an Amtrak train whistle is a reality breakdown as my first choice. I'm saying it could B. I, you know, if I start to talk to people, Matt, it's always, that train whistle has always uh, been. I mean, that is possible. That's, I'm just giving it as an example as how people could react. Well, the other thing is, again, reality shifts and flows, and people on the frequency, on the download, on the radio station, they shift and flow with it. Maybe it was newly implemented procedure three years ago, but to your friends and family and the people that are perfectly in harmony with this reality, it just makes perfect sense that they need to be safe and the, and the or they're going to sleep through it and have no issue with it because they vibrate on the ship of fools perfectly in resonance with the reality and whatever change it may put forth. People are like, well, yeah, it, it's a loud horn, but everybody can sleep through that. See, that's also a possible reality shift where somebody could go. And it's like, well, yeah, Matt, it's not, it's not retrocausal. It's, yeah, Amtrak uh, changed it. Four years ago, they started blowing the whistle, and it's, it can start at six in the morning. But, but let's, everybody can sleep through it where, you know, if I went out there and was a block away standing in somebody's yard, like, bah, bah. so the fact that they all can sleep through it could be a shift uh, in reality. This is how the ship of fools on the river of insanity works in my opinion. It could be a hundred shifts a day and everybody just goes with it, aligns to it, frequency adjusts, adjusts to it. Now it becomes part of their life. No big deal. Where we, I think we shift to a lot of reality changes as well. We're not immune to everything just because, oh, we're a group who can see. So every time there's a shift, I think we align to a lot of it too. But because we're farther removed from the frequency of this place, we see more of these things. We aren't in tune or in harmony with the changes when many of them happen. Therefore, they seem new to us, but if they work like Mandela effects, then they're retrocausal or retroactive in nature. And a neighbor might say, well, that's always been that way. 
like I've said many times, I'm just saying to a regular truth researcher, say one that gets a little triggered by the topic of the Mandela effect, I would say to them, do you see the world as like a normal place? Do you think it's very strange where the world's gone and what it's become, say, over the last 15 years, where children in high school don't know what restroom? I mean, do you think that's normal? Well, no, of course, a true, any truth researcher, even those very triggered by the Mandela effect, well, oh, the world's broken down. I, I, don't, I don't have a place in this world anymore. Everything's strange to me. Well, th guess what? Then you're Mandela affected. See, then you're Mandela affected. It's really no, it's just a little different tweak on the same things. It's not all about movie lines. This is where the Mandela effect has been hijacked, probably starting from the Fiona broom and what they've done with it. If they can get a... Oh, if they can get everybody to focus on movie lines and little trivial things, oh, that's that horse shit. No, see, all of reality is shifting in these little directions. Some impinge on your heart center reality more than others. If the world doesn't make sense to you, then it's all a Mandela effect. All, don't get, it's, you're designed to be triggered. That's where it's been hijacked. They want certain groups to be triggered or yell, PSYOP! Matt's falling for a PSYOP! Oh, it's amazing. Matt can break down reality over here really well, but over here he's a dumbass. He falls for this PSYOP. No, see, that's the hijack of it. All these little reality shifts, ship of fools, river of insanity. Either you're on the download frequency and radio station and you just get in harmony with it, where most people today, they, they might even disagree a little bit and say, well, I don't think, you know, so many kids should wonder what, what they are, what restroom. There's so many kids, but they understand it. That in a way, to most people, it's like a, I hate the word natural, a natural part of where a modern society goes. They're, it's not just an acceptance it's a continuing resetting of their own frequency to align themselves with the frequency of the ship of fools. If you're not on the frequency of the ship of fools, and it's not just about movie lines, it's about changes to reality itself, then you are Mandela affected, in my opinion. Stop being triggered by it. The following is so obvious, but you know what? It's rarely discussed, and I don't know. I'm not sure how much of the, quote, Mandela effect community even realizes this, but you know who created this whole Mandela effect phenomenon or pointed it out in the way they wanted it to be pointed out. The creeps, of course. The creeps coined the term. They used the Fiona Broom. I don't who knows what her creepy role is. The creeps coined it. So people it was a hijack, of course, calling attention to the trivial, to the movie lines. So the people that aren't a hundred percent sure about anchor effects or don't see these sorts of changes, they just yell, Sia! That, you know, they're triggered to do, to do that. It's a cover-up for little reality changes that are happening across the board in all different areas. The creeps, this is a worthy adversary, folks. In a way, though, those that yell PSYOP are correct, but that's not what they mean. They mean anybody that points out a little change that could be a Mandela effect. Well, that couldn't possibly be happening. Though They write it all off as impossible, and it's all a PSYOP. Yes, it is a PSYOP from the creeps to a degree to get everybody focused on the trivial and the movie lines and the Pikachu tail. These are real Mandela effects. They are real reality changes. Although the PSYOP is to get people focused only on that to belittle the people that see it. Once again, they're masters at doing that with the entire truth research community. We're all the boy and girl who cried wolf. We're all belittled in front of our friends and family, and we're one of those people. It's expert at doing it. It did it to the Mandela Effect people. So when there are real reality changes, there are reality changes, in my opinion, associated with in the sky. Tales, duck tales of chemicals. That, that's a reality shift. People that just, oh, this, where are they keeping the canisters? This is a bunch of bullshit. People are so small in their thinking. Oh, where are the canisters? And they load the canisters on the back of the aircraft, and all the airport people are in on it. No, uh, it, we don't truly understand the streaks, uh, the silver streaks. Is, is that, a, what the hell is that? Is that a movie or something? I gotta look that up from the 70s or something. We don't understand it, but it is part of what we're talking about now, in a way, a reality shift. If you think it's just canisters in the back, some guy in the back of a, wake up back there, oh, un unscrew the canisters, let the smoke come out of the engines, and just it's all done manually with people sitting in the back of planes. If, you, if your thinking is that limited, uh, you have a lot of work to do in this reality. 
Tales of Chemicals, to me, is like a Mandela effect. In a way, there's some sort of change going on. If anybody was like, well, you explain it. There's not canisters in the back of planes, Matt. You explain. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't explain it. I don't need to explain it. To try to explain it, as I've said many times in many different videos, is to do exactly what it wants. In this reality, many things are not explainable. If you're always trying to put what's happening in between your reality bookends, you're falling for its trick. You know, that's how it works. We know that now. I don't have to be able to tell you how it's happening to say it's not what you think and it's it potentially could be a Mandela effect. It's a change to reality itself. I don't have to explain it away. I'm not going to fall for that trick. But I can tell you I see what trick it's trying to play of that whole barium, strontium, aluminum. I can't even say it three times fast. Barium, strontium, aluminum. Barium, strontium, aluminum. Barium, strontium. Oh, that was a bunch of... that. Maybe those those things are actually in there, but that was that was a psyop. Of course it was. All those videos about those certain... Yes, there's something nefarious going on. I don't look up at the, the silver streaks and be like, yay, it's a streak day. I'm not thrilled about it. Okay, but it's not... When something I, you can, we can so obviously see now when a certain theme invades the truth community and sucks everybody in. Barry is trying to It's not that. It's something. Who knows what it is? Okay, at this point, I don't have to know exactly what it is to say it's not that. It is a psyop to a degree, and it's it's not um, all those pictures of canisters they leaked out into our community. Giant canisters of gases in the back of planes. Give me a break. That is ridiculous and impossible, and that's what they want us to believe. So for the past 10 years, you know, everybody across the country via different comments, somebody saying, yeah, I'm in Portland, Oregon, and the silver streaks are everywhere today. Or So yeah, this has been going on for at least really um, noticeably and uh, noticeable comments under videos for 10 years or more, okay? It doesn't really matter if it is related to the Mandela effect. There is no date of change. Let's stop looking for an exact date of change. But we also, and it's always, oh yes, it is. Is it more in front of the sun, or is when when you turn around in the opposite direction from the sun and look in the other direction, is it more in the other direction? Um, it's almost always towards the sun, but from everybody's perspective, which is impossible. So there would have to be hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of thousands, fleets and fleets of aircraft. We don't know where they're taking off from. We don't know where they're landing. Everybody at the airport's in on it. The, whoever does the, the air gas corporation, is it, they're all in on it, moving gases around. Millions of tons of gases a day go up and down, but nobody sees the, pla sees the plane. <laughs> nobody sees the planes land or take off. I mean, we were confused by this 10 years ago, but we shouldn't be falling for the same stupid tricks now. Now, 10 years ago or so, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of us in this community were saying, number one, uh, those streaks did not exist when I was a kid. Remember looking up from the pool or the beach? This is relatively new. It's nefarious. There's no streaks at 9, 10, 11 o'clock a.m., crystal clear blue. Then they all seem to come about the same time. They all seem to be in the direction of the sun. Except, so, okay, we all notice the same thing. And I uh, give us all a break 10 years ago for saying, well, there's got to be a reason that fits between my reality bookends. See, okay, I observe, I know that, that those planes aren't doing in the morning. And I know that wasn't there in the 70s and 80s. So but, but it's simple. It's got to be canisters. It's got to be a s smoke and just stuff dispensed out the back of the planes. Okay, I, I guess it's it's okay. We fell for that. But should we, after all we've seen in terms of collectively reality breakdowns should we be doing that today and how much of the truth research community is still doing that sort of thing still trying to make it fit they still do it even with the mud flood of the tartaria research and there's it it has to fit and has to come from the toy box has to fit between the reality bookends oh these buildings had to be inherited it has to fit guess what it doesn't have to fit We've seen to, well, you, they, they say, well, you explain it. That's the knee-jerk reaction. Well, Matt, you explain it then. That's the knee-jerk reaction from somebody that what has to fit in the reality book. It has to come from the toy box. You know when you start understanding reality? When you start saying, I don't have to explain it anymore. That's when you really start uh, getting somewhere. There he goes again. Same old excuses from Matt, Matt Quantum of Consciousness, dumb 
broke ass. He can't explain nothing. Nothing, honey. So you know what he tells you people? He just says it can't be explained, and you people fall for it. We, you should come over to, as these trolls say, come over to my channel. Eventually, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Oh, go fall for the trick some more. You know what it wants most, more than anything else? What it, the creepy thing here, wants? It wants you it wants you closer to it. It wants you in close examination of it. It probably feeds from it. Go give it what you want. Go give it what you want. Go, gi go give it <laughs> what it wants. So the last part of this conversation has to be, Matt, in your opinion, uh, whatever the reality breakdowns may be or fluid reality or things that we notice or anomalies or movie lines or whatever it may be, is it nefarious in nature? It, the creep's in some way responsible, or is it just part of reality itself? And right now, I, I have to say both. I have to say both. I don't know. I do think there's elements of both. We can decide, you know, what side of the sliding scale has more weight. There's, it just seems like the creeps are meddling in so many different things. I mean, they're trying to stall out time in some weird stalled century ritual, keep showing you iterations of magnum pi and <laughs> where's is night rider back i mean what say hey, not milk are you you haven't brought night rider back or their baywatch has been back or whatever so they're trying through there's some i don't know creepy grimoire or something they're trying to stall out time for themselves and i think if you meddle with reality over here it's a rubber band snapback i think reality will poke through over here the yin and the yang rules this place. You can't mess with the yin or whatever that piece, whatever piece of the yin. You can't mess with that without the other piece being similarly affected. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. All this, it comes, you know, these truths of this reality uh, come from everywhere. Um, so you, if they're messing with things, yes, it's going to show up over here. That is part of it. But, you know, in a way, well, Matt, how could it be a natural part well, this reality to me is a wake-up tool or mechanism for certain real beings or spiritual beings that are, are, are finished with it, have done enough. It may be, I remember the, the videos about the truck and tractor pull, when the truck takes off with the 40,000 pounds and, you know, it, it, the truck can move relatively easy, but as that truck and tractor pull and the weight slides forward, then the truck, you know, it, it can't move and then it gets stuck and you know, the people in the fa the stands that paid their $20 to see. Who would pay $20 to see a truck and tractor pull? I, the South is a whole different place from the North. I, 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 actually, I actually watched NASCAR now. Shut up, Matt. Sorry. Um, it, it, the, truck, the reality is a truck and tractor pull, potentially. It, it's a reality wake-up mechanism. It will or may be designed to break down and become a clown show. And as it becomes a bigger and bigger clown show, more and more people are, you know, are forced to a degree to wake up to it and say, wait a second, okay, I didn't buy what this guy Matt was saying five years ago, but I've seen so many weird things. I'm kind of coming over to what Matt was saying or what he what he's saying. But it's like a washcloth being wrung out. How many more drips can the washcloth produce? How much more of a clown show can the reality become? I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it can go to too many different places. But if you told me 10 years ago, kids in uh, 10th grade in your local high school would be uh, doing different restrooms month to month. I wouldn't have believed that either. So because I, I wouldn't have believed that, I must assume it has many more uh, stages to go or many more turns on the dial are possible. But it may naturally be designed to be a wake-up mechanism for real people. And it continuously over time turns up the dial. So more and more people go, this just isn't possible. I'm now putting on the table other possibilities. I'm walking away from BBC and CNN news presentations. It may be designed this way. And if it, for the whatever millions of people or billions, or we don't know if all, you know what, my uh, premise here is all the people here, entities are not the same. They're not the same at all. Uh, we'll talk about that some other time. Then once it wakes up, you know, if there's any grounds at all for reset, once it wakes up as many as it can, then there is no more purpose for the reality. Um, it, then it does whatever. I mean, I don't, I'm not a reset person. I don't make videos on reset. I don't bother with that, you know, but I do see reality to a degree as a wake-up mechanism where over time it could be designed this way right from the start, not a hijacked reality, designed 
from a benign creator to slowly turn up the clown meter. So real people start noticing certain things like Vin Diesel and Xander Cage in the diner and start to react accordingly. Again, all that is irrelevant if, it, if you don't translate it into things that tell you about yourself, what about yourself, yourself and your true nature. It wants you studying. It's always going to play its dark, creepy part. It wants you giving it attention and energy. You can look at it as we do, but it only matters if you then turn it around and say, oh, wait, a reality, a reality overall is a wake-up tool for somebody like me. Uh, people like you, people like you and me, people that are much larger than this reality. Oh, I see what it's designed to do. It tells you about yourself. So back to the truck and tractor pull. Again, that weight slides forward, I believe. And no matter what the horsepower of whatever's pulling it, a critical point is reached where that thing gets stuck. It doesn't matter what else is done, how much extra horsepower. If you got turbo boost, you're stuck because that weight has slid past the point of no return. Is there a point in reality where reality like itself as an entity says, we can't wake anybody else up. We've turned the clown meter up as high as possible. And no, and what, but Matt, what about all those other people or what, what happens to them? Well, first off, how am I supposed to know? They might not be the same entity. The word NPC is on the table, but if they're like us, it's just, to me, I, I like the, the simple approach. I mean, that's, that's relatively easy to comprehend. They just haven't done enough. It wasn't their time. The term young soul, the part of them that's not here, well, puts them in more material realities. They have more work to do. They're, they want to resonate with the ship of fools. They want to merge with it. They want to blend with it. They, they're not ready. That, that's, the, you know, that's a lot easier to put it that way than to say to doom somebody as an NPC. Or we don't know. We don't know what they are. Um, don't, they're never going to see what you and I see because we are literally in some way in a different reality. It's hard to talk about, but that's somewhat accurate. I, I just threw this out five years ago that the ship of fools, river of insanity, we dove off, we swam to the shore, we're on, a, we're on land, we're, we're rooted to a different place. I threw it out, it seemed to be accurate. Uh, I, I'm not sitting here stroking myself, trust me, but it, it is proven to be 100% accurate. We are rooted to a different reality than your friends and family are. How is that possible? Well, you know, all we can do is throw out lame pedestrian terms like they're on the radio station, download frequency, threw that out years ago thinking that, they're, you know, that has been proven to be 100% true. We'll never really understand it, I think, but it doesn't matter. We don't have to. Let's stop trying to understand if buildings were inherited or let's stop trying to understand the mechanisms. And it's, that's has nothing to do with worry about yourself. The go to the highest possible um, level up or get in your hot air balloon and go up as high as you can. So what is this reality designed to do? How many people in the truth research community go up to that level? Again, what is the reality itself designed to do? Well, here's how it covers its tracks, its role players, and its creeps protect itself, protect the creepy role by bringing the real spiritual being to the lowest possible level. What is this specific creep up to in this specific instance or this specific cake and lake event? If you're down in the weeds, yeah, you see some dark things and you notice some things that your friends and family don't see, but you can't see the big picture. You can't do what you need to do for yourself. You need to go to the top. As a whole, what is the reality designed to do? How many people in the truth research community have ever gone, other than us, have ever gone to the highest level and said, what is the entire reality designed to do? If you do that, you see then creepy roles. You see role players. You see it in a different light. Yes, it's still dark and nefarious. I'm not giving it a pass or a break, but you see its creepy role. And that creepy role is necessary. That's where truth researchers refuse to go. It's necessary. As a whole, to me, it's designed, in general, to wake us up to certain things. Now, that list is long. It's beyond the scope of this video. Understanding about ourselves, understandings about the difference between balancing the Vitruvian man, the spiritual side, with the material side. I mean, it's designed to do a lot of specific things. But in general... I think it always goes, it goes back to the truck and tractor pull. It is a wake-up mechanism. It's designed to be a wake-up mechanism for real people. 
And how would it do that if that's what it was designed to do? It would turn the dial up on the freakish, the clown show, the impossible, the breakdowns, whether they be kids in high school that don't know which room to go in, book us into the room, book us into the restroom, or the birds flying in front of my car, or train whistles that go off at six in the morning and nobody seems to care. It doesn't matter. Based on this, let me ask you a question, and it's the easiest question ever posed to you. Do you think it's going to continue to break down? That truck and tractor pull, that weight's going to continue to slide? Or do you think it's just all going to stop and it'll be mad? Now that the seven-year tribulation of the eclipses and the X mark the spot on Carbondale be over, it's all going to get better. It's going to be all better, Matt, and all the Hillary Clintons will be marched off to jail and they'll share ga- jail cells with Anthony Weiners and it'll be, it's going to be all better. No, sorry. They're going to be more weird horse shit. There's going to be more Tartaria, weird freakish things that come, more reality breakdowns, more weird ass crap all over the place. It's going to, I think that tractor pull and that weight's going to continue to slide because you know what I think? I think that's what it was designed to do. Well, we went, Matt, we woke up a long time ago. We don't need any more of this horse shit. Okay, we don't. It don't care about us. We've, it's done its job for us. Okay, from our perspective, from its perspective, from the perspective of the Rock of Gibraltar, whatever that is, we'll be out of here. We'll be out. We'll be seeing Violet in about one half of one millisecond. Don't care about us pleasing us. It's got a job to do to continue to evolve into a clown show. With the, in, in that sense, the the Santa Claus Schwab or George Soros, Larry Silverfish, they don't have the big picture understanding of even what this reality is for, in my opinion. They don't They don't even understand as, as much as you would think, in my opinion, about their role. Very few people are in on it at the highest level. If reality is out to hide its true nature and its true reason for being from the group that has the greatest chance of seeing through it, of waking up its adversary, hiding it from us, well, how would it do that? By bringing us down as low as possible into the weeds so we don't go up to the top and look as a whole as to what it's doing brings you down to the weeds it does that through the police lineup or let's examine this specific mall event or who's the bad guy matt don't you know it's the secret societies no it's tavistock no it's the rand corporation haven't you ever heard of the trilateral commission matt how about the council on the foreign relations it's this bad group it's alistair crowley it's the oto it's golden Dawn. it's other secret societies it's the it's the 322 oh 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 you oh, 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 take me away calgon that's what it wants doesn't want you to leave the details behind. What do you think? You think the reality wants you closer to the details? What does your inner knowing tell you? Of course it tells you it wants you to get closer to the details. So then you know what to do. Leave the details behind. I'm no genius in making this presentation. This is obvious at this point. Matt, that's awfully arrogant to throw out that our potential understanding of what this reality may be is beyond the creepy players under it may be at this point. I'm sorry. It may be. The more I, I, I look around, the more it seems like that even people you think are the highest level, they understand their creepy little role. They understand that no American Airlines, you know, with the, with the, when the job application was submitted, there weren't, weren't no American Airlines. There weren't no United Airlines. They know that. They know the specifics of their own little ruse. But in terms of how everything fits together, I don't think they know uh, as, as much as, as even even 5% of what you would think. They might know what the eclipse is and how that feeds the reality. Or somebody had a really interesting comment, uh, transfers, the moon needs a transfer of energy. Every You know, things like, they understand that. That does not mean they understand the purpose of the reality for real, timeless, immortal beings. That is way over their pay grade, in my opinion. Thanks for listening.